Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a minute and talk about storyboards. They are so important to putting together any type of 3D animated scene. Often overlooked by beginner animators, folks who are just getting into this, storyboards are the way that you decide what you're going to see in your final outcome. That's right. Now, they're easily overdone, especially when you first get into them. Uh, I've known many students up to and including myself. When I first got into animation, you think that storyboards mean you have to pretty much draw out every other frame of your animation, and that's just not the case. No, it's really just a map. That's right. It takes you from beginning to end, and it gives you some sort of structure to work within. That's right. It's a guide to keep you from having too many questions while you're animating. Like when you're working on your scene, you don't want to stop and go, you know, how long do I want this action to take place? Right. Or what kind of stuff do I need to take place here? You want to have all of that decided before you get in, and your work will be a whole lot faster and easier because of it. I cannot tell you how many students I've seen in the past when learning Maya will just sit down and say, I'm going to make this really cool scene, and it's, it's going to have these spaceships that are going to fly out, right? And they're going to be like <laughs> shooting each other, and then there's going to be an explosion, and a wormhole's going to open, and out comes a third party of ships. And, and I'm like, really? How long is your animation? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's got to show all this stuff. <laughs> what does your ships look like? I don't know. You know, I'm going to just start modeling, and it's, I got it in my head, man. It looks cool. And I'm glad you'd bring up that, that in my head bit, because a lot of people do that. They have this awesome scene, the be-all, end-all of 3D animation in their head. All of us are probably Spielbergs in our own right. <laughs> exactly. But until you get that thing, your idea, locked down on paper, ironclad in, you know, in some form of writing or some sort of physical apparition, then you're lost. That's right. Because your mind will keep changing. You'll see influences around you. You'll watch a, a movie later that day with some really cool scene involving spaceships, and then all of a sudden that original idea you had is probably going to be skewed a little bit. So you want to keep your ideas from changing too much. You want to get as much of this idea locked down as you can before you start. That's right. Now, let's talk about the tools and supplies that I recommend you get. Yes. Number one, paper. Yes. You can just grab some regular printer paper. I mean, if you want to get all fancy, you can buy storyboard paper. There's storyboard paper out there. It's already divided up into cells, has little That's lines right. on it so you can add Printer notes. paper works great. It's cheap, and probably most of you have it lying around right now. Number two, a pencil. <laughs> a number two pencil. <laughs> there you go. And number three, mm. a stopwatch. Stopwatch is good. Yes, because you need to establish an understanding of time. Mm -hmm. And by having a stopwatch, you can act something out on, you know, on your desk. Like That's you can right. take your fist, ball it up, and pretend it's a bouncing ball and go, gabang, gabang, gabang. And you can time that and see how long it takes for these actions to take place. And then you can start translating that over into frames. I was jumping across the room, actually. Yes, By the way, in, in that <laughs> regard, don't be afraid to do stuff like that when you're acting out and timing with your stopwatch. Get out there and try it yourself. Yeah. You'll look a little silly. Sure, people who aren't animators will look at you funny. That's a given. But people who are into animating will realize exactly what you're doing right oh, yeah. away. So, and they'll have a, a huge respect for you for going through that. So basically, Zach has put together some uh, simple storyboard shots explaining yep. what our scene is going to be. I use no special tools here. There is no special paper. This was right off the top of my printer and a plain Jane common pencil that I'm sure every one of you have lying around. So, Zach, if you don't mind, go ahead and walk us through what you've got. Sure. Well, here's our first storyboard. This is where our scene is going to open. We're going to see our, our curtains close. Now, by the way, I do want to get this out. You guys have already had the luxury of seeing this project in its completion. That's right. Unfortunately for Zach and I, this is how we saw it at first. That's right. This is Actually, how we began the whole thing. It looked a little worse than this. We just scribbled like crazy, just <laughs> different ideas of what would be on the stage. And at first, we had lights all on the front and all sorts of fancy stuff, but, you know, we had to continue to come back to the idea of this is for beginners. Let's not get too crazy. That's true. That's something else I would like to bring up. These storyboards that you see here, like many storyboards, are the result of several different drafts. Yeah. So don't be afraid to just jot down, you know, cr little stick men in the place of your characters are sure. very, very random things. Whatever it takes to get your mind focused on whatever it is you're going to build. So here's our end result. So it is very important to understand that these came first. Like, like Zach said a second ago, uh, we just showed you the final scene in your mind. You can now kind of tie all this back together, which That's is right. very, very nice. But you don't really have this luxury at the beginning of the entire production phase. Now, if you work in a studio, that studio is probably going to have some format in which they want their storyboards. If you're just working on your own, do whatever it takes to keep things straight in your mind. I like to be relatively organized, but don't be afraid to jot little notes here around the outside like I've done here. 
So here's our first storyboard. Our scene has just opened, and I've left little notes. See, scene opens, curtains are closed. I've got a time signature. We're going to go from 0 seconds to 0.5 seconds, which, if you break down into frames at 30 frames a second, is from frame 1 to about frame 15. That's okay. Right now, we're not expecting you to have an understanding of what frames are. We're going to talk about that nice and carefully when That's we right. get to the animation. That's lesson. all coming up, so don't worry about that. Even when you make your initial storyboards, if you just want to do things based off your stopwatch, where you only write down the seconds, that's fine. So basically, our opening shot has our curtains nice and still, closed, and that's going to take place for half a second. That's right. You'll notice I've jotted some other things down, too. So I have mentioned that I want a wood floor in here. I'd like the curtains to be red. I want a single spotlight from up above causing our little cone of light here in the middle. And I want to include the stool and the mic stands, which I've drawn here. Cool. So that's our first storyboard. That's going to take place for half a second. So here's our next storyboard. The curtains have opened, and uh, they have opened up. And I've mentioned here, I want this action to take one second, and then I want them to hold for half a second. Okay. So there's going to be uh, just the, the curtains opening up over the course of one second, and then really nothing for one half second. We've uh, kind of asking myself some questions here. I want these curtains to swish, and I left a little Maya note that I don't expect you guys to understand <laughs> just yet, uh, That wondering whether or not we should use soft bodies to make the curtains do their thing. And then another note, uh, the door color should match the back wall, because like in a lot of theaters, you don't want your door to stand out if that's a stage door. So uh, th again, more time. We have from 0.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Then we go on to our next storyboard. Now the curtains are open, and we want this door to burst open, and we want to see our character right behind it. So uh, we've got all this written down. Talented ball bounces through. Door action should take about a third of a second. And again, that's just from playing with a stopwatch, maybe moving my hand as if it were a door until I like the rate at which it's flying open, or all sorts of things you can do. If you want, go kick your own door open, but Buzz kind of got onto me for trying that. <laughs> so uh, then notes that it should look like the, do the ball kicks the door open. I got a little boom there just because <laughs> that was inspiring. Now, uh, next image. We have uh, the bounce as the, the ball starts to come out onto the stage. So uh, No, that's not a beard no, on the ball. That's a tuxedo. <laughs> that, that's a little tuxedo that I've, I've drawn on there. And we got some action lines. Thank you very much. Your vote of confidence is overwhelming. So, uh, of course, we're bouncing through the scene. To, uh, I got notes, bounces out on the stage, door closes, and the action for the door should take about two-thirds of a second. Basically, I want the door to close twice as, uh, as slowly as it opens. So it's going to open up real fast and then close a little more slowly. Uh, the time for this is two and a third second to four seconds, so 2.33 to four. And uh, again, little notes, should feel like a cartoony bounce. Bounce should include squash and stretch. So you notice I've got my ball kind of stretched up here into the area. It's no longer a perfect sphere anymore. So let's go to the next... And our ball has landed on the on the stool, and the curtains have closed back behind him. You can see the, the spotlight cone just barely around him. Talented ball bounces up on the stool. Curtains close. Action should take one second. So remember, that's one second to open, one second to close. Talented ball prepares to sing, dance, etc. Time is from four seconds to five seconds. That's right. Well, we're animating. It's going to take place over 150 frames, five seconds worth of the time as we know it. That's right. Now... I do believe in the very end we render out about 250 frames just because we're leaving a little bit of time for the curtains to kind of swish back and forth as right. they close. Right, exactly right. And then if uh, if you guys want to add on any sort of motion in the end, which we'll talk about That's later on, right. the then uh, you'll have time to do that. Precisely. So really with that, you've seen all the storyboards. Just a real br quick review. I'll just kind of flash through them real quick. So again, here's our beginning. Curtains are closed. Everything looking good. Swish open the curtains. We swish open. Boom! Door knocks in. Now we're he comes. bouncing through the scene. We land on the stool. Curtains close. There you go. He's ready to do his thing. That's right. Again, storyboards, very important. You do not have to be some sort of killer artist to draw out some sort of guideline that's going to get you from the start to an end of a production. That's right. I cannot stress how important the storyboards are. If you just sit down at Maya with an idea in your head and begin working on your project, you're going to end up taking five times longer than you would have if you would have put it all on paper first, ironed out the details, and then stuck to the storyboard from start to finish. That's right. We're not saying it's impossible to work that way. Just that you're not going to be working as quickly because you're going to have to keep second-guessing yourself. You'll spend a lot of time with the wheels spinning, that's so right. to speak. So with that, that's going to uh, wrap up this video here. And what we need to do now is go ahead and move into setting up our project. Yep.